The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus left Jericho with the disciples and a large crowd, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting at the side of the road. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he, begged to sh he began to shout and to say, Son of David, Jesus, have pity on me. And many of them scolded him and told him to keep quiet. But he only shouted all the louder, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him here. So they called the blind man. Courage, they said, get up, he is calling you. So throwing off his cloak, he jumped up and went to Jesus. Then Jesus spoke, What do you want me to do for you? Rabuni, the blind man said to him, Master, let me see again. Jesus said to him, Go, your face has saved you. And immediately his sight returned, and he followed him along the road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> If we are honest with ourselves, and in reading the Gospel today, we can identify with all the people described in the Gospel. Now, blindness, we know, is something that is physical. Either we are, it's a birth defect, or we get it along the way by some kind of misfortune, accident, or sometimes we gradually lose our sight, partially, and you know, we have myopia and cataract and all that. So that actually affects our vision and how we see things it's on the physical side. But we also know that even though some, some of us can see properly, we have this tendency to turn a blind eye sometimes. Because we know the expression, we turn a blind eye to something or someone or something happening. And also, that spiritual blindness. Blindness to what we have received from God. Now, this is something that uh, happens to the best of us. We often see what we don't receive rather than what we have received. I mean, for me personally, I also have the tendency to always crave for something that I don't have or to want something that, that uh, I would like to have. Instead of looking at what I have, and be grateful for it. And this is something that, I, personally, I will always remind myself to cherish what I have, not to be blind to what God has given me. Now, why do I bring up this? It, of course, it's obvious because it's the gospel speaks of the blind, but which of the characters are we? Are we the blind man? Are we Bartimaeus, who either cannot see physically or cannot see spiritually? Because the fact is sometimes uh, there are many things that are going on around us, but we choose not to see. We choose to say, no, I, I, this is nothing to do with me. I just turn my eyes away. Yes, the, the psalm, some of the psalms do say, turn my eyes away from evil, from looking upon bloodshed and all that. But is that what it really means? We are not asked to turn away from injustice. We are not asked to turn away from what is not fair, what is not right. But very often, we turn away. And that actually puts, it, puts us in the category of the crowd who, who scolded the blind man. Instead of helping him to say, come, let me take you to Jesus, what does the crowd do? Hey, quiet. Don't say anything. Quiet. Just sit down there and just be who you are. Now this, I think, many of us fall into this category as well, because when people need our help, do we help them? Or we tell them, keep quiet, just keep quiet, don't, 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 don't come and bother me, uh, just stay one side. And very often, whether we want to admit it or not, it happens in our own families. The irony is this, sometimes our eyes can see the misfortune of other people, right? People need help, we go and help them. 
we go all out to lend our ears, our shoulders, our efforts to help people whom we don't know. But what about the ones in our own family? Hearing the confessions of people without divulging the, without breaking the seal of confession, I can tell you honestly, I would say 90% or more confessions are on family issues. Children will say their parents are not listening to them. Spouses will say their spouses are not listening to them. You know, parents also the same thing. So where is our compassion? Are we blind to the needs of those around us? Because very often it is those around us that we find most difficult to love. It's easier to love people outside than to love our own families. But that, that is the irony of it. We are supposed to love the people in our family first. Otherwise, how do we love the people outside? That will make us hypocrites, actually. When we, people see us, oh, this person is a loving person, caring person, responsible person. But then in the family, they, act, they, they are just indifferent. So, the cries of our children, the cries of our spouses, the cries of our parents, these are the ones that we cannot turn our blind the, our, our eyes blind too because we may be busy we may be you know having bad times and it's not just about providing family families needs in terms of physical needs alone we need to provide spiritual needs emotional needs children need that i can personally attest to this i grew up without uh Let's say my family is not the lovey lovey huggy huggy type, huh? Typical Chinese family. I give you food, I give you education, I give you shelter, that's it. Don't ask for more. But you know, when whenever me and my second sister we talk, uh, we talk of the emotional hurts that we that we experience as a child and how each of us have to struggle and overcome these difficulties so that we don't make the same mistake more so her as a parent and it is so it is it is important to not when when our children or our spouses or our parents come to us uh, you know i need to talk or I, I need someone to listen to give them that time that even that five minute ten minute can make a whole lifetime of difference and that is the one that often brings the family closer together that heart to heart talk so, when we can do that, then we become like Jesus, who says, what do you want from me? What do you need of me? Then we, someone asks us, we say, I give you this, I give you my time, I give you my love. And that is where the healing truly begins, and that love truly forms. That bond that of the family that is necessary to not only help the child but help the parents and every, the entire household to become a stronger unit and that is that's all we are looking for if the home cannot be a place of love and happiness where else can they find it and if they can't find it in their homes if they find it elsewhere and become disastrous then who do we blame then the the finger pointing will start so let us ask God for the courage to get rid of all our blindness, especially in the family, to open our eyes to see the needs of those in under our roof and tell them, courage, just tell me what you need. And to tell ourselves, be courageous and to be there, no matter how difficult it is, to be there, to listen and to grow together so that we, all of us, can build a truly united and loving family and from there we can slowly change the world by spreading that same love.